everybody, I'm Jen. And I'm David. And we are back with another episode of David Christopher's. And today, David himself is going to be showing you all how to make a... Tomb clip. Tomb clip. Headstone. Headstone, right? Whatever you want to call it. Some people call it a saddle. And we'll get to why in just a minute. Stay tuned. Okay, so a couple of years ago, you made a saddle, was it? You showed people how to make your own tomb clip, saddle, so many different words. I do not understand why there's so many words for all of these home decor. If you watched last week's video, we talked about orbs versus spheres versus decorative balls. You called it something else? Headstone rack. Headstone rack. And the reason for that is it's going to be built on this base which looks like a saddle, kind of. It sits, I would want to sit on that saddle. <laughs> yeah, so basically, <laughs> this is a truly Southern tradition, is, you know, something that people on the West Coast and up North may not realize, but in the South, we do a lot of decorations for uh, cemeteries here. So, mm -hmm. you know, for family members, you know, someone might buy one of these, it will have flowers on it, of course. But basically what you're gonna do is you take this and bend this frame to uh, kind of a shape where basically you bend it narrower than your headstone and then you kind of slide this on it. It's got these little rubber grips on it that'll help hold it there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things that people do here. And we have a lot of people asking us how to make their own, because so many people want to be able to make their own, and of course we sell all, I can't even speak, we share all the flowers. <laughs> we sell all of the flowers that you're going to be seeing, that you're going to see in this video today and David is going to show you a quick little way to make your own, starting with a piece of styrofoam, styrofoam bar. Right. We so, sell this on our website as well, davidchristophers.com. Yeah, so this particular bar of styrofoam is cut specifically for these um, headstone racks. It's pre-cut, so, yeah, right? This is two inches thick. It is four inches wide here and it is 12 inches long so it's 2 by 4 by 12 and that fits just perfectly at the top of our piece so the little prongs in this rack here if you can see those actually go into the styrofoam basically i dip the ends in glue and then i put this about an equal distance from the sides and then you just press in and then i kind of hammer in a little bit too Okay, so the next thing I do is I take these little wooden sticks that have this metal clamp on the middle of them that will bend into this U shape. I'll dip them in just a little bit of glue and then I'll push those in around the metal part of the frame. Just a little reinforcement. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to do this from here. The traditional method is to take this leather fern, or known as leather leaf in some parts, and it's gonna have a very thin uh, wire with some teeth on it usually, and it's very inexpensive, and that's one reason that it's used. So you would kind of like stick these in the sides. I would normally glue them in. And you would just kind of, you start to hide your frame and everything. And you're gonna bend these kind of down because this is gonna kind of hide everything and just kind of flow over the headstone. But we're not gonna do that right yet because what I like to do to mine is a little bit different is I like to add a little bit of moss because I don't like to see the styrofoam at all. I don't like to see that bright green. I want it to look a little more natural, just uh, right out of the gate. I will use the leather leaf, but I'm gonna show you how to hide the leather leaf properly because it works as a good base, but I don't really like the look of it. So if 
if you need it to be inexpensive, that's a great option. But uh, I really cut it short. Um, and we're just going to kind of go around the perimeter of our saddle here. And this is just going to give me a good base uh, so that things can kind of lay on top of it. of a southern thing that we do more so in the south like what happens more in the north and west coast or even east coast so if you're from those areas I would love for you to comment and let us know like what are your traditions when it comes to do you visit the cemetery where your loved ones and friends are buried and take flowers are there vases Sometimes I think that a lot of people in other regions tend to use more fresh flowers. Oh, okay. That whereas makes sense. we'll use artificial flowers and leave them out for, expect to leave them out for quite a period of time. Yeah, a lot of times people will come and see us at David Christopher's to get their cemetery arrangements. Right now we're in the middle of a huge season. It's April and through Mother's Day we will be extremely busy with people replacing flowers or getting something for spring. We usually see those same people again in the fall. They want something. Yeah, so we've got a few different groups of people, but there are some people that will do kind of the four seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, That's me. <laughs> all the way, you know, through the end of the year. And then, you know, some people do uh, particular holidays. They'll do Christmas and Mother's Day and fall. And that uh, that's probably 90% of the people. And then some people do it twice a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people only do it once a year. So it just yeah. depends. Or birthdays, sometimes people yeah. come in for birthdays, Father's Day, things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to add this foliage leaf uh, to, on top of my leather leaf. Like I said, we're going to, the goal is to kind of hide this. The leather leaf is hiding the frame and all of our materials there, hopefully, and then we're going to add this on top of it. And wait for the drain. in and it makes it look more real yeah a lot of people aren't a fan of the leather leaf but like David said it's basically just gonna be a base that's not gonna be the focal point you're probably not gonna see a whole lot of it once he's finished with this but this piece today is going to be a little bit more on the home decor looking side that's basically what we've gotten more requests for recently or people are not wanting the well the traditional memorial arrangement is very very symmetrical all sides are even everything you know exact in certain places and if you've seen any of our videos you know that's not really my thing <laughs> yeah it's usually like a mound and so this one as you can see i'll hold it up so you can get this angle of it um, it's definitely not like that and okay. it's not going to go in that it'll, direction. It'll go a little asymmetrical. I'm kind of trying to face it toward the camera so I'm doing it a little backwards. But, okay. And if you see me at any point in time with my knife and I'm cutting the stem like this, I'm shaving the plastic end down. That almost went my eyeball. <laughs> so, I need safety goggles. Uh, to a point because this this large piece of plastic uh, doesn't go into the styrofoam very well so I shave it down to a point and then glue it in uh, it just makes your life a lot easier so just food for thought but I would say don't try that at home it looks dangerous to me <laughs> so. no pain no gain <laughs> Oh my goodness, what's next? Okay, so now we're going to continue with our foliages. So we're going to use 
uh, a few different things. This is Lady Fern plant, which is really nice. It feels so soft. I just want to pet it. So we're going to allow this to kind of hang down in the middle a little bit more. Also, um, so we'll cut some of our hanging fern up a bit. And this piece here has this cone on the end that you can take off. And I'm just, are you going to take it's it off? It's glued on, but you can pull it. Yeah, I usually pull it off. So it's a little bit of a, a booger to get off. <laughs> Ugh, I got it. So that is going to be, it looks like a little mini ice cream cone. Yeah. That's meant if you have like your own little vase or your own container yeah. and you just want to stick the whole thing down, down and down some in. styrofoam. You can do that, yeah, but. It does make it easier. Not today. We're not going to do that. Would you like me to separate these for you? Sure. Jen's over here making my life easier. <laughs> I try. David called us the denim twins earlier. Did. Because of our shirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> we didn't really mean to coordinate this morning. Not a bad idea, but. That would require forethought and planning. <laughs> yeah. Usually in the morning at our house, trying to get ready, because we have two kids that go to two different schools. I take one, I said, uh, David takes the other, and it's just sometimes like a scramble. So we don't really have time to coordinate our clothes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So these. Ooh, can you also see where we added the extra things there? And don't worry about the glue hanging off. We yeah, kind of deal with that in the end. Hopefully. For sure. So these you are going to, you're clipping them a little bit. I am just uh The ends of these are very narrow and most of them, are, not all of them, but most of them the end is very thin, a very thin wire, but toward the base of the branch here, it gets a little thicker. So David is basically cutting the skinnier part off on some of them so that he can have a better piece to It'll be more stable in the styrofoam, but then also brings it in a little bit closer because this is the piece that's not going to be as out there. I mean, it is, but it's not not meant to be as long because this is just a smaller, shorter little bundle anyway. One more, that's all I got. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, we do not have much styrofoam that is visible. We've hidden most all of the places that we would want to hide. So now I think it's pretty safe that we can uh, start adding a few flowers. Mm -hmm. You're not going to use this? I probably will. I'll just kind of go back and fill in. A little bit later? Okay. I love this flower. If you've watched any of our recent videos, you said this is called a protea? Protea. Protea. Or protea. Protea. <laughs> we don't know. Some, it's somewhere along there. But this was used in the floral wall video that yeah. we put out a few weeks ago. And it's really, really pretty. And I don't remember us having this in the past. Uh, this one was new this year. Yeah. Um, it's also something that's been very popular for weddings. I've seen a lot of them for brides, bouquets, and the like. Uh, but today we're using it for this. Uh, so these these do have a fairly thick stem on them. Uh, the plastic anyway, so good idea. Shave that down just a bit. And these actually have lifelike thorns. And when I say lifelike, I mean I kind of poked myself pretty good with one of that one. So handle with care. Well, you gotta make them <laughs> lifelike. I mean. I mean, those are sharp. So we're gonna add a couple of these protea. Do you need more? I could use another one. Yeah. Hard work. 
I mean, it looks like it would just be, oh, I'm sticking all these pretty good flowers into the styrofoam, but the amount of knives and tools used, you get carpal tunnel fast. Nah, just do it different every time. <laughs> what I do. Do it different every time? Yeah. So that you're not doing the same motion over and over? Right. Basically. Well, these wire cutters, people always ask, like, what kind of tools are you using? And these are just Irwin Vice Grip that we get from where Lowe's. Yeah, I usually just get cheap wire cutters because I've been known to leave things in places mm -hmm. that I go. So. And sometimes we go and decorate for people at Christmas time and they will contact us and say, um, you left your scissors or wire cutters, this bundle of wire, like, ugh, well, if yeah. we see you next year, we'll pick it up. Because sometimes it's a little far to go. <laughs> right. And shipping these days, it's, it's cheaper just to go buy some more at the store than have it shipped to us. All right, so I need a couple more protea. So I have a couple more in there. We have two more. Awesome. So as you can see, um, I've kind of gone with a linear style, but I branched out in the middle a little bit. Um, so because this will be seen kind of from all directions, I have to do some on the back as well. But front will be facing toward the camera, hopefully. Okay, to brighten this up and make this a little uh, cheerier, we're going to add this uh, chrysanthemum spray. And we're just going to keep going kind of in a similar pattern to our uh, protea and branch out a little bit from that as well. use this field thistle spray because it kind of helps me with this uh, tropical-ish uh, vibe I've got kind of going on here. Just get one of these kind of down in the front. Now I'm going to fill in with a little bit of this fuchsia rose. So I'm going to cut all of these off. And fill in some of these spaces I have, like here. One final thing to add to this, is that the bird's nest? Yeah, um, I think so. Okay. So we're going to cut this apart into individuals. Miss cut it for you. If you would like. I'm probably not as fast as you. Make it look so easy. These aren't too hard to cut though. No. But this give me a good, they got a good stripe in them. Ooh, this one's also pretty. got a, like a UV coating on it, keep it from fading outside. And since these are going outside, you know, this is a good thing to add. That's one thing that surprises a lot of people. Most of our 
flowers can go outside. There are a few, and we can tell you which ones those are if you ever have a question and want to know, but most of them can go outside and be fine. Obviously, the elements are going to hurt any kind of item that's outside, whether it's a flower or you know, right. your lawn furniture. It's going to fade in the sun over time. The rain is going to get to it at some point, but typically the sun is more damaging to the flowers than, yeah, really than anything, anything else. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if your car fades in the sun, eventually your flowers are going to fade off. Yes, because we have had people that are like, I bought those flowers from you, and six months later, they had already faded, and it's kind of like, uh, if it was, if it took six months for them to fade, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> like, I got to put a cover on my grill to keep it from fading. <laughs> right, so these will fade over time. That's the reason you do have to change them out at yeah. least a couple of times a year. A lot of people, though, don't put saddles on the graves year-round. They do more of the, what we call the base inserts or the bases. It's so pretty. I love that. I would be happy with this if I passed away and you put it on my, <laughs> my stone. Well, let's be honest. One of us is going. It's the one that stands on the top of a step ladder with one foot. No. On the handle. We've made a pact. We are... We're, Planning, planning. It's funny, we're planning to die together when we're like a hundred and She knows that I can't survive without <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of cemetery pieces, I did want to share with you all a verse today from Matthew 5, 4 that says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so we know that a lot of people that come in to see us are dealing with loss, they're dealing with pain, they're dealing with grief. I know I lost my father several years ago and grief can hit you at different times, at different places, it's unexpected, you never know when it's going to come. And sometimes when we meet with people to take their orders for their cemetery pieces, that is a time that their hearts can be very heavy. And we always at David Christopher's want to be sensitive to that. We will stop and pray with you if you're in our store and you need prayer. And today we just pray that the, the God of comfort and the God of peace is near you and close to you and that he just wraps you up in your love and that he just really shows you how much he cares for you each and every day, especially when you're walking through loss. So we hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of how to make your own saddle. If you are local, come by David Christopher's at 411 South Montgomery Avenue. We do have a buy one, get one half cemetery sale that runs through the end of June, and we'll be happy to help you take your order, put something together for your loved one that's special, or you can choose from things that we already have made up in the store. But until next time, take care.